Today we're doing another episode of our 90 from 90s. Today we've got with us music extraordinaire Ross Braidwood. Can you choose an album that, that meant something for you in the 90s? Well, far, well, far enough, the one I'm going to choose, I didn't buy it in the 90s. It's one of the more recent things that, that it was I made discovered. It. So it's a bit of a, it was made in 1999. So it's by a uh, English solo artist called Beth Orton. Album's called Central Reservation. So I think it's maybe our second or third album. Not 100 percent sure. Um, but it's always one that always appeared when I was reading articles about albums, and, and it always came up to check it out. So when I finally got round to it, it almost feels as if it's a bit of a undiscovered gem. Um, mm-hmm. And it's I think it's 12 songs and a bit of variety in it, but a bit like we were doing with the Red Hot Chill Peppers, a bit of variety in the music. It's a lesser known one. She's got a brilliant voice. Her voice has kind of changed over the years. But her voice then is just perfect. It's hard to I'm trying to describe what she sounds like, vocally wise, but she just, she can she can she's able just to convey uh, an emotion, but she's not like a when it over sings, which I think a lot of female singers do, pop singers don't put in. So it's, a, it's just an undiscovered gem. I, I, would, I would recommend it to anybody. Central Reservation by Beth Horan. I don't think you'll be and Stephen, what about you? Have you got an album for today? <laughs> I'm going to go with something a little bit more well-known, <laughs> which is R.E.M.'s Automatic for the People. So R.E.M., for those that uh, obviously follow us, uh, uh, people will know that R.E.M. are one of my favourite favorite bands. And Automatic for the People is one of my... Uh, it would probably be fighting to maybe nab the number one spot as my favourite album of all time. It is an absolute... Classic and ironically, I just went to see an REM tribute band on Friday night with a friend and friend of the show, Davy Mellon. Uh, and the band are called Stipe. So, if you if they come to a town near you, check them out, they're really, really good. So, yeah, why Automatic for the People? Uh, well, it was a huge success for the band, and uh, it's probably most famous for Man on the Moon and Everybody Hurts, obviously, two very popular singles from the from the record uh, but it's 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 different for rdm because it was much more maybe acoustic and strings type album um and there's kind of a, a feeling of i don't know loss that hangs over it looking for the the right way looking for something um, so there's that kind of mood that hangs over the album yeah, melancholy is the word. That's it. Yeah, a, a kind of mood of melancholy over it. And the band are just on top form, um, produced great, strings in it are great. And you just need to have a you know a look at the track listing to see why I've picked it. Drive, Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight, Everybody Hurts, Sweetness Follows, Man on the Moon, Night Swimming, Find the River. I mean, if there's ever a better final three songs to a record, um, please let me know. But Man on the Moon, Night Swimming and Find the River. Three absolute classics. So, yeah, that's that gets my vote. Uh, automatic for the people. If you've never listened to it, do yourself a favour and listen to it as soon as possible. Amazing record. It's a, I mean, it's a good idea for a series, actually. The, the opening three songs, the closing three songs. Yep. Yeah, very, very important. <laughs> Don't give us ideas. I'm giving you ideas. <laughs> What about you, Paul? Well, I remember the, the day this album came out because I was doing, I was still at school, I was doing work experience at your work, remember? And did you not go out or your friend John went and bought it, Stephen, on lunch break? Yeah, I think John bought it the day it came out. I, mm-hmm. I bought it after because I ended up buying uh, Out of Time, the previous album, on a, mm-hmm. I think, on a Monday, uh, coming walked along to the shop from work. And then I went back the following Monday and bought uh, Automatic for the People, or, or vice versa. So I bought those albums at the same time. So to me, they're like a double album, because I used to listen mm-hmm. to them all the time, pretty much back to back. They're similar, aren't they? Yeah. Musically. They are. The they are. Green, 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 yeah. A bit more raucous, perhaps. Yeah. Sound. Yeah. And, and I mean, out of times, maybe a bit more sunshiny, uh, more of the California type harmonies uh, on it there, um, a bit more jangly, um, but, it, like they, but yeah, so for me that was kind of like the, mm. 
Yeah, it was. So for me, that, that was like this one, which was the more maybe commercial type upbeat stuff. Um, and then the set, this was the second disc with the, the more acoustic melancholy uh, type thing. But there, there, there is, a, I feel like, a link between them. You can see it's the same band. Uh, so yeah, to me, it, if it was a double album, it's the greatest double album of all time. And I, nobody can change my mind. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I remember it, Paul, because the CD, the original CDs came with the, the yellow, yellow. Uh, plastic yeah, it was weird. spine. On it rather than black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it made it stand out. And it, it's funny because in many ways I think that album at the time, I think it's not a very good cover. It's all dreary and that yellow is horrible. But it almost made it unique. You kind of liked it because it looked crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you kind of liked it for that. So. What are you going for? It's actually got a brilliant. And that's the other thing as well. Is sometimes it's, it's not just the front cover, it's the back as well. The back cover, sometimes mm -hmm. the back cover is actually better. Yeah, and the front couple. It's, yeah. it's the whole thing, isn't it? Really, it's mm. you know, it's got it's got more colours. Yeah, yeah. I do think, like what Ross said earlier, and I do. If you really love an album, chances are you're going to love the album cover. I think it's almost like mm -hmm. your football team. If your team's done well that season, you'll probably like the strip they're wearing more. Whereas if if it's a pure season, it's not you won't like the strip as much. It's the way your brain works almost. Uh, so, so, yeah, so my album is Queen's last album, or last album in Freddie's lifetime, but I would say, yeah, it's, it's their last album. And it's Innuendo. It's quite a sombre album as well, a bit like Automatic with the People in a way. It's but obviously, you don't know at all till the end of the year that obviously there's a more meaning to the songs but you can kind of if you listen to the lyrics you can tell that there's impending doom <laughs> but but also there's a lot of optimism as well so it's it, it came out of january that year and of course freddie passed away in november the end of that year but for me it's like a return to form for queen because the miracle the previous album is arguably their worst album it's terrible Although there's a couple of like brilliant tracks on it, but there's a lot of stuff that's just embarrassing, to be honest. So this album, they're kind of going back to their roots, like with the title track, you know, six, six and a half minutes. The only thing I feel that stops it being a classic Queen album is the production. It's still very much an 80s production style, using synthesizers instead of like real orchestra or drum machines instead of real drums. But I think it's just a really, maybe their best album since, since the early 80s and it shows them taking risks. And uh, despite what was going on for them, there's a lot of optimism and Freddie's vocals, obviously, despite being extremely ill, his vocals are the best I've ever been. And because uh, I think for the show must go on, Brian Mayer wrote these lyrics for Freddie to sing and Freddie said and he said, Oh, just give me a vodka and he gave him a vodka and he stood up and, and done the bit at the end of the show must go on in one take. And it's just like gives you goosebumps listening to it. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And that was like he knew he was he was dying and but to get those that powerful vocals and that emotion, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so that's that's kind of my album for today from the 90s. What about you guys? Have you heard Innuendo? I know Stephen has. Well, she almost gone, isn't it? Which is probably not, you know, you both guys know I'm not a huge Queen fan. I know that um, that would probably be my favourite song. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know it was on that album, The Show Must Go On. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 were, what were the other singles of it? So the title track, Innuendo. Which went to number one. It was like six uh, I minutes. Think not, I think I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was yeah. Is it like sort of almost like strings or flamenco yeah. guitar and everything uh, on it? Yeah. 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 A bit like Led Zeppelin. It sounds a bit like Cash. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then Headlong, I'm Going Slightly Mad, and These Are the Days oh, of Our Lives. Yeah. These are like, I saw the two. Well, two of the singles. These are like a good song. Yeah. yeah. They would be the top of my list yeah. for Queen. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. I'd probably prefer that to mm-hmm. I think, yeah, it goes yeah. back to uh, Brian May. His guitar sound is probably what puts me off <laughs> Queen and the vocal harmonies. Freddie Mercury has singing super. I think it's mm-hmm. there's aspects that are put me off. Yeah. Of, uh, uh, no, obviously, yeah, obviously Queen are my favourite band. I uh, moved obviously to the podcast episode dedicated to Innuendo, and for me, um, in minority, I think it's overrated. It's not one of my favourite uh, Queen albums at all. Um, but yeah, brilliant stuff on it. Okay. Thank you for listening today, and thanks for Ross for being our guest today. We'll see you next time. Keep trimming. Mm-hmm.